Welcome everyone to Ryan's videos. I would like to thank you, every single one of you, who is showing up here today to do this study with me. Whether you are a subscriber or not, just your presence here is worth everything. Thank you. And may the grace of God in the love of Christ be upon you and your family and all of those around you. Let's start with a prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name and we thank you for this moment here. Dear Lord, we glorify your holy name for this moment of fellowship, for this study. We thank you for everyone present here today. We ask you that we may bless every one of us with this study. Open up our minds, our hearts. Dear Holy Spirit, take over. Take over, Lord, because you are our teacher. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The study that we are going to go through today is called the 12 Symbols of the Word. This is one of the greatest studies that I have ever done. It is simple, easy to understand. And for those of you who are new here, I want to welcome you. One of the things you're going to notice about the studies that I do is that in many ways it can be very controversial. Reason being is because I go through the scriptures with Greek Hebrew in references, and I do everything I can to stay within the scriptures. I do not like interpretations. I do not like my personal understanding. And for as much as you're here in reading with me, you will understand as time goes by and you get used to this study style. I like to rely on the Holy Spirit in prayer, in study, because that's what we have to do is study. Let's start with an introduction. One of the things you're going to notice on my, all my introductions is they go around the same verses. These are great verses that fit as foundation for our study, for deep thinking, and to encourage us to pray more and seek more our Lord for wisdom. So let's jump right on it. We are going to start with Acts chapter 17, verse 10 and 11. And it reads, verse 10, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogues of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Pay attention to that verse, to that passage. They received the word all Readiness, mind. They received the word with all readiness of mind. In search, the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So let's read it again. These were more nobles than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So, I always emphasize in all my studies, one of the most known verses that I always recite is this one. Because we have to search the scriptures to make sure everything we hear, it is what it is. I can come here and grab a verse and isolate the verse and put my own understanding, my own personal interpretation on it. And make us say anything I want to, but does it really? No, it does not. The word of God prevails above every thought. And why do I say this? No interpretation. And I understand, I always said this in other studies before, no matter how hard I try to say I'm not interpreting it, I am not the one putting my own thoughts or understanding it. All I'm doing is doing a study and going through the Bible for what it says. I know there is always somebody that will be coming over and say, Oh, no, Ryan, you, you're, you're doing this and you're doing this. No, I am not. But it's okay. It doesn't bother me. What really matters is the intention of my heart, which is to give you the scripture for what it says. No interpretation. Okay, our second verse is 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read verse 19, 20, and 21. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn. And... The day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Pay attention to this. 
knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of the man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So what should we do, you may ask? Because I've asked that question so many times. If I cannot interpret, what do I do? Here's what I do. Here's what we do. We pray and we ask for wisdom. We never rely on our understanding. And we study. Let's check these verses out. Let's check James chapter 1. Let's read verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Let's check 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. And it reads, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. Let's read Psalm 111, verse 10, and it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. In our last verse, and this is to end our introduction, that is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Brothers and sisters, this ends our introduction. And I'm sure you can understand why I always focus on book, chapter, and verse. And you can take your time. You can pause the video and go back and forth. And you can read before and after as far as you want to go to read those references that I gave to you. And you will understand that all I am doing is giving you what the scriptures is to say, is saying to us. So, all right, let's go to this study. And it's an amazing study. It's, it's so fun and comforting. So let's have fun, shall we? The 12 symbols of the word. The first symbol is a hammer to convict. Let's check book, chapter, and verse. Jeremiah, chapter 23, in verse 29. Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? I will not get into the specifics of the heart being a rock, but we all know that our hearts are right like a rock. And the Lord is going to replace that heart of stone, of rock, and gives us a heart of flesh. So this is the hammer, the word of God that hits our hearts and break it into pieces. And the Lord will give us a new heart. Amen. Number two, the second symbol is a fire, but a fire that refines. Amen. What's going to happen to the one-third of the people of Israel? They're going to be passed through fire. That's the word of God. They will be refined as gold, as we all have been, all of us who received Christ, because we have been through the fire of the word of God. Amen? Let's see, book, chapter, and verse. And before I put the verse up, I need to mention that one of the most beautiful things about the Scriptures, and study the Scriptures, it is the fact that there is one verse sometimes, and that verse can say more than just one thing. So we are going to see the same verse again, that we're going to see the hammer and the fire. So let's go back to Jeremiah 23, verse 29. And it reads, It is not my word, like as a fire, saith the Lord. His word is like a fire. All right, symbol number three, a mirror to reflect. We can find that at James chapter 1. On this one, I have to read more verses because you have to understand the context of it. We're going to read from verse 19 through 25. So verse 19 starts like this. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity 
of naughtiness and receive with meekness the encraft word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. This is a mistranslation. That word is actually the word Greek, esoptron, which is mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner man he was, but whose looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein. He is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. And to better understand, we can go over the mirror. And if we pay attention to the passage, we see that if we don't do and we only hear, we reflect our own selves. We are beholding our own image. But once we do the work of the Lord and we hear the word and we do everything that there is in it, or at least try our best, we will reflect who? The Lord Jesus, because we are ambassadors of our Lord Jesus. Amen? Let's go to the next. Number four, seed, to multiply. Because the word of God never comes back empty. So as you learn, as you refine yourself, you reflect Jesus, preach the word, the truth, that will set people free. So we're going to see in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Number five, a labor to cleanse from our sins. When we receive him, a fountain of water will form inside of us. And if we drink, we'll never thirst again. So we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Number six, a lamp to guide. Psalm 119. And we are going to read 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Number seven, rain and snow to refresh. Let's see Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 and verse 11. For as the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh bring forth in bud, that it may give the seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in a thing whereto I sent it. Number eight. A sword to cut. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. But somebody may say, well, it just says it's sharper than. It doesn't say it is a sword, right? It's okay. We got a book, chapter and verse for that too. Let's go and check it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation in the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Number 9. A bow for revenge. Let's take a look at Habakkuk. Chapter 3, verse 9. Thy bow was made quite naked, according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. Number 10. Gold to enrich. Let's check Psalm 19, from verse 7 through 10. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord 
aright, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Now, with all this, we can be really rich, absolutely wonderfully rich, because it's desired more than gold. And yes, it is gold. Number 11. It is power to create faith. Let's check Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's power to create faith. Now, I wrote in parentheses, eternal life. What happens when we have faith in Jesus? What happens when we accept Jesus in our hearts? What happens when we turn away from our sins? We ask forgiveness. We accept Jesus. And we believe in the resurrection. Through faith, we have eternal life. John 3.16 12. Food to nourish A. Milk for babes Let's check 1 Peter chapter 2 Verse 2 As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. B. Meat for the strong people We'll go to Hebrews chapter 5 um, verse 11 through 14. Now, the reference for this is 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 7, if you would like to check. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. In these three are one. And also for reference, John chapter 1, from verse 1 through Verse 5, which reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, when it comes down to the passage we're going to read in Hebrew from verse 11, through verse 14 on chapter 5. This is talking about Jesus. When you read into the context of the scriptures, and it reads, verse 11, of whom we have many things to say in hard to utter, seeing that you all dull of hearing. For when, for the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Strong meat for strong people. C. Bread for the hungry. Let's check Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I know, I know, I'm sure somebody is going to say, well, but that's not saying it is the bread. It's only saying we don't live by bread alone. Absolutely. Let's check. Let's take a look at John chapter 6. We are going to read from verse 30 through verse 35. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? Our father did eat the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them the bread from heaven to eat. 
Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Now wait for it, wait for it. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Word. The Word is Jesus. Jesus is the verb that became flesh, right? So check this out. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And D, honey for dessert. Let's look at again. Psalm 19, in verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Well, Ryan, it doesn't say it is honey. It says it's sweeter than honey. Sure, correct. But who remembers that the Lord promised his people, I will take you to a land where overflows with honey and milk took to a land where Jesus was born. Jesus is the Word. The Word overflow in His land. In the land overflows with honey and milk. My wonderful and beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, I love you very much, and I thank you for being here and studying with me. We got to the end of another study, and I would like to wish you all that may the grace Love and knowledge of the Word of God may be with you all. Thank you so much for all of you supporting this channel, supporting these studies, because I do them for all of you. Let's close with a prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name for this moment of fellowship. We thank you for the Word, for the food for our souls. And we ask you, Lord, that your Word may be inside our hearts, minds, and soul. If anyone here who has not accepted Jesus yet, I would like to ask you, in love, would you accept him in your heart? If your answer is yes, because we don't know what tomorrow lies for us, we are living the last days, we are living the last moments here on earth, and we know everything is pointing out for the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you would like to receive him in your heart, close your eyes and pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you are the Son of God and you live a sinless life. I believe in a resurrection. Dear Lord, write my name in the book of life. I am a sinner. Help me not to sin anymore. Help me to be the best son you have. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, forgive my sins. Guide my steps so I may not transgress against you again. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I accept your Son, Jesus, in my heart. Save me, Lord, in the holy name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you all for participating. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, be with you forever.